Good afternoon. It was a weird start back to work, considering I can't log into my computer. Now that is some real life kitchen countertop for you in that time lapse. We've got bottles to clean, we got dishes to do, but I'm really excited because I am cooking for the first time in a very long time. Um, tonight, we went grocery shopping yesterday. Um, so I am making with those mushrooms that we got from the farmer's market, some like Philly, well, there's no cheese involved, like Philly sandwiches. So the mushrooms I marinated like you would steak, and then I'm frying up the peppers and onions, and I'm gonna make some sauce to go on top. Um, and we have some really nice buns to put it on. So that is how we're using those mushrooms. Um, also, did you see in the time lapse how potent those onions were? My eyes were watering so, so bad. Um, but yeah, we're just having a night at home today. We never made the chocolate chip cookies. So maybe, maybe we'll do some baking and maybe we'll watch some Christmas movies. It's kind of freaky how much these mushrooms actually do look like beef. So I'm gonna sear these up. Um, I just Googled a steak seasoning and kind of followed it, mostly soy sauce, garlic, pepper, some cayenne pepper too. Um, so yeah, these will get seared. And then all the good juices from these. I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna make the sauce. Just yeah, kind of maybe like a gravy. Um, just going with the flow. And then I also made a spring mix salad with cucumbers and tomatoes with a buffalo mustardy style dressing. I'll link the recipe that I found in the description. So I just dunked the bread in the juice. That straight up looks like beef. It's freaking me out. We call these soakers in Chicago. And that's how they look all done up. Should have gotten some sort of vegan cheese. Look how sweet these two are over here. Just hanging out. Let's eat before he wakes up. He's got impeccable timing to wake up to eat. <gasps> right when we eat. Hello everybody. Dinner was fabulous. Please hold. Gotta be like carousel progress everywhere. Um, dinner was fabulous. I liked it. Um, Sarah was able to use the fennel seasoning and the garlic seasoning on those that different kind of mushroom that we got from the farmer's market and it looked and tasted just like Italian beef and I was like this is exactly what I needed on my day one back to eating healthier and running again to get me back into the plant-based rhythm. Still not going to be 100% but we're going to be like 95%. Um, haven't had any sweets haven't had any pop um, and I even took even a walk and mother nature said Peter I'm giving you a Florida gift from me it is 72 degrees that I opened up the windows it's got there's a breeze I text my buddy Steve from Tampa I was like hey how's your foot have you been running did you feel it out tonight we're getting a gift from mother nature I'm gonna go on a run in a little bit I gotta charge my phone for a while and weather app says that early hours before sunrise tomorrow, it's going to be 61 in Orlando. That's just begging to be run in. So even if I don't feel like it, I have to go early tomorrow because it's been a brutal fall winter here. Like hot, 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 continuous. So with this break, I have to take advantage of it. Between yesterday and today, I made my home screen all fancy. I'd like to point out she even graphic designed her own matching Universal Orlando in Disney World. Yep. Because the app she bought didn't have them. Thanks for the shout out. So then my second page has social media and news. But then the only troublesome thing about having these custom icons is that they still have to exist somewhere. So I have the folders plus a couple of apps that um, are for the baby that I didn't feel like making custom um, icons for. But then I also have photos and a little weather app. 
Oh, you just missed him breaking a little smile. So we're having a half lazy, half um, exercise at night. Yes. We're going to watch Jingle Jangle. Yeah. A new I think Netflix I'm make Christmas. The chocolate chip cookies. Oh, while we're watching Jingle Jangle or um, after or during? Or maybe. We can pause it. You could do it. Pause it. Yeah, we'll see. It. Or I was going to say when you're on your run, but then I don't know if the little baby is going to wake up. Plus, we have to do little dishes. Yeah. So, should we like, should you start the cookies and I clean the dishes? Sure. Unless, of course. He agrees. He stirs. Oh, oh gosh. Also, his mittens just got cleaned today, which is why he has socks on his hand. <laughs> He's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. He looks like Nick his, Miller. His two week appointment. They're going to measure I realized we, we said last time it was his two week, but that was just a weight check. He had a little bit more weight to gain. He is weight not, to gain? Yeah, weight to gain. He's not Benjamin Button. He's been growing for the yes. past week. He wasn't stuck two weeks old for two weeks in a row. No. The solution is to put James in a rocker on the counter. How cozy. My cookie dough is all ready. I think cookie dough is my favorite food. I think we're the best tag team. Yeah. Dishes done. Baby stuff sanitized and washed. Cookies. Ready. <laughs> Baby. Still asleep on the counter. So good. I just used the Nestle Toll House recipe that's on the back of the bag. Um, have my little fancy drink. I'm typically on the lazier side and just make like a pan cookie and then cut it into squares. But tonight I'm going to make individual cookies. Hey, well, first batch is in. Sarah is feeding James, so I put the second batch in. I didn't prepare it at all. I just literally placed that in there. I will not take any of that credit. But they look pretty tasty. The day I'm supposed to be eating better, Sarah makes these delicious looking cookies. Sidebar, when I was getting ready to do this last pan, my little sous chef over here, Eve, likes to stand right at my side and assist when I went to go grab a big ceramic bowl, like a three or a four quarter, slipped off the counter and was gonna land directly on her. And so I kicked it. So I think I smashed half my big toenail. Uh, but everybody's fine. Bowl's fine. My foot's fine. Eve didn't even know what on earth happened. She just thought I was kicking the air. Ultimate teamwork. Look at this dish collection of cookies. Got the last ones here. They got a little, little, little extra cooked. But those are the last of them. And I had a sink full of soapy water. So I, had, I was cleaning the dishes as we were getting rid of them. So literally this is the last dish I need to clean and be done. I was so stressed. I get irrationally stressed about lots of dishes when we do bigger things like baking, um, but I knocked it out. So now we're gonna let those cool and I think we're gonna watch this Jingle Jangle on Netflix. Here's the movie we're about to begin. Solid two hours and four minutes. Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. Christmas Musical. Christmas Musical. I can't, and I saw so many people being like, this makes me so excited for Broadway to return. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty pumped. So we really liked the movie so far, but I was starting to doze, and James, he was actually asleep. Um, and so we decided that we're gonna pick up on the movie tomorrow. Peter's gonna go on his run, and we are going to go to bed. Me and the babe. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are not even talking about it, but you know, we've, we've said before, Sarah and I always go to bed together. Mm hmm But I guess it's I one of those things where it's like, I don't know if I'll necessarily fall asleep or how things will go, um, but we figure, like with you running and it getting a little bit later, we just make the most of our time this way, and we want to enjoy the movie. And gotta take care of Jamesy boy. Yeah. You just being sweet over here. Daddy heated you up a bottle. You get your belly nice and. Oh, for bedtime. You ready to be swaddled? Right, I'm gonna do the message before I go to my run. I, we may even sign off ahead of time too. Today, Monday the 16th of November. Oh, on the second half of the page. Today's is by Marcus Aurelius. Remember this, that very little is needed to make a happy life. Isn't that just the simple truth? If the girl hasn't seen me getting ready for running in a while, I think she's kind of confused. 
especially when Sarah and James are going to go to bed without me. She's probably going to get real confused. So, she's a loyal puppy. These are our favorite swaddles. <laughs> they have nice Velcro. They get super cozy. But he still can break out because he is Houdini. an escape artist. What do we say at the end, James? It's good to be home. It's good to be home. Check it out. Park Avenue night again. If you guys miss this as much as I have, whew, it's like 66 degrees right now and beautiful. But I want to show you this cool, these art, this archway. I think I've said now like four or five times I'm starting running again like I did two years ago. And we're going to stick it strong when you get ready for World Marathon. And I think it hit me yesterday and today early this morning of why well, I've been having such a hard time and I haven't even talked to Sarah about this yet so surprise Sarah when you see this when you're editing but uh I had a realization that my running has been funky since Sweet Pea about October of last year and for anybody who's new who doesn't know Sweet Pea is the baby that Sarah and I lost um last year and shortly after that I we actually realized something was really wrong the day I ran a just woke up on a Sunday got up and ran a marathon for no reason. It was a training marathon for my 50K. Um, and that was like an incredible feeling to just wake up and go run a marathon in the streets of Orlando. And then when I returned home was when Sarah was like, hey, something's not right, we gotta go to the doctor again. And that's when we went the next day and found out that Sweet Pea had passed. And ever since then, for a while I held like, like frustration and anger. And it came to a head during the 50K and we talked about it then where I like Sarah, I couldn't see Sarah the last five miles because I was just losing it. And then shortly after that was the dopey. And that was, I don't think we talked about it, but also frustrating because I started training, losing weight, getting healthy because of her infertility multiple years ago for my first dopey. And here I was running another dopey weeks after we lost Sweepy. And then it was a few months after that that it was princess weekend and we learned that weekend that our IVF or our embryo transfer stuck and that is James and infertility is a weird thing we talk about it a lot but infertility doesn't go away post children especially when you're like Sarah and I who plan to continue to grow our family there's like little moments and emotions that feel lost or stolen and we're has not not taking away from James and we love and cherish every moment of that but there's just the, like little jolts of, of like a like a lightning bolt of like do we have to go through the same journey we just did to do this again or what are the delays what's it going to be like and I think using running years ago as a catalyst for me to be healthy for my children and my family got hurt with Sweet Pea and I yearn for Sweet Pea and Sarah and I talk about Sweet Pea all the time and we both we both think about Sweet Pea every single day I think we always will um, because Sweet Pea's looking out after us. And I think I hadn't acknowledged that the piece of me, the running part of Peter, that was connected to getting healthy for my children had been hurt since we lost Sweet Pea. And we kind of jumped right back into, you know, the fertility treatments and waited to, as soon as, like we got, as soon as possible to do another transfer, which we got blessed with James. And, I think I was just like spending the last 15 days with James, it hit me. I was like, because, you know, children after loss doesn't get rid of that loss, you know? Um, it just makes you think about everything from a different perspective. And I, I think it finally hit me that I was like, this is why I have been struggling for the past year trying to really enjoy and really love my thing in running. And I think between yesterday and today, that's what it is. And, it, and I, I'm listening to a, a running playlist on Spotify by my friend Carolyn, who runs and is active and healthy for a lovely family member of hers. And I think if maybe that made the connection um, there, so thank you, Carolyn, um, where I'm not mostly running now to be healthy for my family. I am. It's a huge piece of it. Um, 
but my running journey continues. And as we go towards fundraising for American Cancer Society, and as we go towards World Marathon and every other running event, big and small, for the rest of my life, that's it's for Sweepy. It's for the entire lifetime that I don't get to be a father of, that I need to pour into the rest of my life. And how do I do that? I'm healthy and active and running. So I think I don't say all this with, with a saddened heart. I say it with like an enlightened and happy heart that Peter's back to running and I'm running for Sweepy. All right, I have to get back to running. I have to go back home. I have a baby and a wife and a puppy waiting for me. Hopefully they're all asleep. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions.